Okay guys, so what we're gonna do now is showcase my favorite things that they added with the firmware 2.0 on this GH5. So, let's go over the menu. Let's go ahead and, oh, by the way, here you go. I'll show you my, uh, my memory card real quick. I know I talked about it, but it's this memory card. It's the Delkin V90 memory card. Make sure you get something that will work with this camera with a new firmware. So let's stick that back in there. And uh, let's go ahead and reframe this, guys. Focus it again. So first things first is the record, uh, record bit rate. So let's go ahead and click on the quick menu. Let's go ahead and go in this page right here. So before, it didn't have all of these options. So we'll go with C4K, sorry. 422 10-bit all intra. So all intra pretty much what it does is from my understanding is compress the frames individually instead of compressing them um, in batches. Cause technically each frame in your video should be different. Like somebody walking into frame or leaves flying. So it's better to have all intra. I because it compresses it in, uh, individually each frame. Now what's crazy is the Panasonic EVO 1 that uh, Panasonic selling has the same bit rate as the GH5 now, which is 400. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that Panasonic EVO 1 is actually like $6,000, $7,000, but it has the same recording file as this baby right here, if I remember correctly. So we have C4K, which is full 4K at 4096, 2160 but it also has the Ultra HD of 3840 by 2160. Now the 60 frames per second and up the high speed frame rates are still at 8-bit, which is, I mean, that's understandable, guys. If they were to put that 10-bit in here, 422, this camera would just break so much, I don't know, it would just kill Panasonic's sales on other cameras, so they will have to put limitations on this uh, camera somehow right but yeah so here are all the options that comes with it 422 ultra hd 30 frames per second and that's a lot of options for such a uh, small camera it's supposed to be a hybrid and i think it is the best hybrid so far oh sorry it is the best hybrid so far as far as pictures and video so file formats freaking amazing so let's go ahead and go in the menus. Anamorphic 4.3 mode is also changed. There's a lot more options now for this. You can go 6K, 30 frames per second. But what you're gonna think about, which what you need to know about this is it's 4.2.0 at 200 megabits per second. And you can see that here. And it's long GOP, not all intro for the 60 frames per second. So they still have the 150 megabits for the 60p 8-bit, but they also added the 4K all I 400 megabits per second. In my opinion, anamorphic wise, that's freaking crazy. And the HLG hybrid log gamma is also available and is anamorphic lens um, setting here. This is nuts, guys, for anamorphic in this GH5. This opens so much options for you to use. So basically, there's 6K anamorphic now, which is 4992 by 3744. But like I said, it's only 200 megabits per second. It is 10 bit, but it's 420 instead of 422. You can get 422 all intro, but you have to use the 3328 2496, which is the old resolution in the firmware before. Another thing that I loved about this update is anamorphic de-squeeze display. So I'm gonna turn this, actually, let me turn it off. Let's go to anamorphic 4.3. We're gonna turn that on. If you're shooting anamorphics, you wanna shoot in 4.3. Let's go to uh, 424p, perfect, yep. Okay, and you're gonna see that it's 4.3 mode, right? So we're gonna go back, we're gonna turn on, we're gonna turn on the anamorphic de-squeeze display and 
there you go. It's properly de-squeezed. That just saved you money in having to buy a monitor that has a de-squeeze feature, kind of like uh, small HD has. So that's amazing for anamorphic guys. That's freaking crazy. So let's go ahead and go back to regular mode so we can show you other features. Okay, so let's go down. Um, they also have the HLG view assist, which works similarly as the vlog view assist. Let me go ahead and show you that real quick. So we're gonna exit out. We're gonna go to our quick menu. We're gonna go to our color profile. And here's the new page for the color profile. We're gonna switch to HLG, which is hybrid log gamma. Click on that. And right now you're gonna see that uh, the uh, view assist is already on automatically. We can double check that by going here. And there you go. The white version is the view assist for HLG and the vlog is grayed out now. And can you choose, you can choose between um, mode one and mode two in this one. So let's go, whoops, sorry. Go right there, mode two, converting 709, good exposure for main object, and the first one is with sky. Now, kind of like how log works, this is just to help you view um, what you're shooting, but it's still gonna shoot at log gamma. There is a bug right now in this firmware that you're gonna have to enable the view assist sometimes because it turns off. So what I did was I did function three as vlog assist. You see the vlog L, switch that over, and it's gonna turn on the view assist. There's a bug. So if you're shooting vlog and it says that the view assist is on, but you're looking at the back of your screen, it's still log, that means you have to turn the view assist back on. So you can either assign a function here to turn it on and off, so you're back to the Rec. 709 view assist, because yeah, it's buggy right now. They'll probably fix that later on. That's not that bad. That's doable, that's workaroundable. So let's keep on going. Let's look here, see if they change anything here. Um, it's crazy how much they change, which is kind of nice. Now, from my uh, understanding, the HLG mode only works in .MOV and, and MP4 LPCM. So if you use AV, CHD, and MP4, you're not gonna have all these options I'm showing you. So just to be safe, shoot in MOV or MP4 LPCM. Um, the, the autofocus stuff has been upgraded, but I don't have native Panasonic lenses, so I don't think that really affects me. I will try it just to see if it's any better, but I'll do that later on. So let's see here. I know they added one for, um, for uh, stabilizer. Yep, right there. If you go to your menu to stabilizer, e, uh, IS lock video, it's for video. It's pretty sick, but it's a really cool feature and they added. And another thing that they added for anamorphic lens is anamorphic video image stabilizer. So you can do a 1.33 uh, crop, or no, I'm sorry, not 1.33 crop, 1.33 squeeze, or a 2.0 squeeze image stabilization for your anamorphic lenses, which is really freaking cool. Like, I don't know what they're trying to do, but they beefed the heck out of this GH5. I mean, it's, it's been a year since I first saw this GH5 in um, Cologne at the uh, Photo Kina. I mean, I knew they were gonna do all these other features, but I didn't know they were gonna beef up the anamorphic at all. So it's a pretty good bet that I went with this camera because it's pretty sweet right now. Okay, so I showed you all that stuff. Another thing that really caught my eye again is on the anamorphic side, which is the monitor display. You will have video guidelines now, which is, like I said, it's gonna save you money because you don't have to pay for a monitor that has guidelines. So if you wanna go for three, two, three, nine, I mean, and you click on that, you're gonna see a little dotted line. It's gonna show you your, uh, your frame guidelines. That's really what that is. So if you go back and change it to 69 or whatever, obviously it's not gonna do anything because this back is, is already 69. So let's go back again, 235. You'll see a little red dot. I'm sure if you can see that, yeah, you can. So you can see that, that's your frame guides. I don't think I forgot anything as far as my favorites. If you have any questions at all about this firmware 2.0, let me know 
And um, I'm gonna be shooting some stuff this weekend. You know, I'm always shooting with a GH5. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff with this thing. So if you have questions, let me know and I'll talk to you guys later.